We can say hi to one of Hollywood's greatest actors, certainly one of the busiest actors, Ernest Borgnine. And Ernest is heading down under yet again. He's no stranger here, that's for sure. But before he leaves, we're able to say hi, Ernest. Hi, how are you, Peter? Look, I am terrific. in Australia? <laughs> well, we are delighted to hear that you're heading back down under. Yes, yes, and so am I, believe me. I, uh, I love Australia, and I, I've had some wonderful times there. Uh, all the time, all the way from the time I first made that great big picture that came out of Australia called Summer of the 17th Doll. With wonderful Angela Lansbury, of course. That's right, and Ann Baxter and John Mills. Sir John Mills, I'll have you know. Yes, <laughs> quite a cast of people, I might say. Ernest, you are always working. You're one of those actors who just keeps on turning up. Now, it goes without saying, you are a terrific actor. The crews and your, your co-stars love you, but I think you must have a darn good agent as well. Well, I tell you, I've been through more agents than you could possibly shake a stick at. <laughs> uh, simply because, um, you know, uh, they, they take you for granted, you know? And what they try to do, I don't know about the agents down in Australia, but what they try to do here, as soon as they get a picture for you, they try to make uh, more bread with it by selling other actors along with you. You know what I mean? In other words, creating a package. Mm. And um, uh, it's not the greatest thing in the world because uh, most people who produce pictures uh, want actors by themselves. In other words, if they wanted a whole fleet of actors, then they would say, all right, I want this one and this one and this one and this one. But they try to sell them not only one actor, but five or six all at the same time. So the agents have now become the power brokers of Hollywood, have they, Ernest? I suppose so. You might call it that. And then again, they also get to be a pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest, let's talk about Hollywood now, because this year, I think, at the Academy Award nominations, it's a really eclectic list of movies. There are some movies there that I would suggest, perhaps, even as a short time ago, as five years ago, would not have got made because they would be considered to be downers. And do you oh, think sure. there is a still a lot of creativity in Hollywood? Uh, you know, from the stuff that we see on our television uh, stations, I would say no. But um, uh, the theaters are doing much better. Uh, uh, that is the cinema itself. Um, uh, there are good pictures out this year. Uh, I would say that it's going to be a toss-up between um, um, Driving Miss Daisy and uh, Born on the Fourth of July. Do you think Tom Cruise will take out Best Actor? Yeah, I would say so. And, uh, and of course, um, I think that um, uh, it'll be, uh, for the women, it'll be, uh, well, oh, I've forgotten her name. Jessica. Uh, who? Jessica Tandy. Jessica Tandy, of course. And, you know, I worked with her husband, Hume Cronin, when we were on the stage together. And I want to tell you that Mr. Cronin played the most beautiful Hamlet I have ever seen in my life. You will be pleased to know, Ernest, that McHale's Navy is still being screened down here. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> they know that it's now in color? No, we haven't got the colorized version as yet. We're looking forward to getting that. It's what I predicted that they should have done the second year that we made them. And they said, oh, no, 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 we can't afford that. And I said, well, how much would it cost? And they said, well, it would be, uh, be $12,000 a week more. And I said, my goodness, you know, someday you'll, you know, you'll kiss my, 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 me just for mentioning the fact that it should have been colorized. Well... Uh, they spent millions later on just colorizing it, so you figure it out. <laughs> that was a remarkable television show, Ernest. I wonder, though, whether there was, for you, having been a very successful movie actor with movies like Marty Under Your Belt, was there a uh -huh. stigma about going into a television situation comedy? Well, it was, actually, in those days. And uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a funny story about how I got McHale's Navy or why I took it. Uh, my agent had called and said, uh, listen, we've got a thing here called McHale's Navy. Would you like to be the star in it? And I said, no, no. I said, I, I'm a motion picture actor. I said, I don't want to do uh, television anymore. You know, I had done 
uh, television live out of New York. I had done a lot of television out here. Now I'm a motion picture actor, right? And I got an Academy Award, the whole bit. The next morning, there came a knock at the door. And some young man was selling chocolate bars for some private school or whatever it was. And, um, and he said, uh, sir, he said, would you like to buy some? I said, sure, I'll buy some. How much are they? And he gave me the price, and I dug down for the money. And he said, uh, mister, he said, uh, aren't you in show business? He said, I, I don't know your name. He said, but I know I've seen you. And I jokingly said, my name is James Arness. <laughs> and he said, oh, no, no, no. He said, he does have gun, will travel. And I looked at him and I said, well, my name is actually Ernest Borgnine. And there was a long silence and he looked at me and said, I know I've seen you somewhere. I said, thanks, kid, here's your money. <laughs> I the money, closed the door, put down the chocolate bars, went to the telephone and called my agent. I said, is that part still open? And he said, yes. I said, I'll do it. And he said, wonderful. What changed your mind? I said, none of your damn business. <laughs> <laughs> a year later, I'm driving my car way up in Oregon somewhere, out in the boondocks, you know? Yeah. And um, by golly, I was looking for a place out in some lake, and I finally found it, and I stuck my head in the office, and the fellow took one look at me, and he said, Mama McHale, what are you doing here? And I said, son of a gun, that kid was right. And I want to tell you, because of that, of that show, I became recognized all over the world. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing. With the exception of, of uh, Japan. Japan didn't want it because, well... They didn't think that their men would ever, would ever quit under fire. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, we go. We had the ship's cook. You know, our, our cook was a, was a Japanese fellow who had who had abandoned. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then of course in England they didn't think too well of us because they said the Admiralty frowned on it and said that no uh, no uh, sailor would ever uh, act like that in the British Navy. Never. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Ernest, we have just received a message from a colleague of yours, a man who is in Melbourne at the moment doing a mini-series. Mr. Telly Savalas has called through to say hello to Ernest. Oh, bless his heart. Uh, you know, this is one of the mo world's most wonderful guys. He really is. And he's got his brother Gus with him, but they are the most wonderful two guys you've ever seen in your life. I made, um, I made two, three... Three pictures with uh, Telly. Uh, they were all about, uh, believe it or not, um, what the devil was I just saw it the other day. Um, the devil, the Dirty Dozen. A famous one. Yep, that's right. That was the first one that we worked in together, and then we made two others for television production. But uh, Telly, Telly is one of the nicest guys you'd ever want to meet. Well, we had his brother... When you, when you hear from him. We sure will. Well, he's listening in right now. We had his brother Gus here two weeks ago in this studio, and what a delightful man he is, too, full of stories. Did he tell you, did he tell you that at one time he was a, an official with the, um, with the uh, American Councils who, uh, you know, he, he served all over uh, the world practically well, with, uh, with American Councils overseas. We got the whole story, Ernest. We sure did. <laughs> well, that's Gus. Ernest, are you ever going to sit down and put your stories, your tales into a book? Because you must have it all there. Well, I'll tell you, you know, it's not that easy, you know. Um, I've had some mishaps in my life, and of course those have to come out as well. And I don't want people to know about my private things, you know. I mean, that's, that's my own private, and uh, I had headaches with them and everything else. Although... Essentially, my life has been beautiful. I, I can't complain. I went hungry. I've been uh, tired and, and uh, disgusted many times. But I'll tell you, through it all, I kept the faith. And uh, I must say that life has been, knock wood, very good to me. And in fact, having friends like Kelly Savalas and his brother Gus uh, helps me all, all the more, believe me. Well, I must say that you have been rewarded somewhat with your beautiful wife, too. <laughs> I should say so, believe me, but it took me a while to get her. <laughs> Had to shop around there for a while, but you got the right product in the end. 
Yeah, I sure did. Believe me. Ernest, may I ask you about a lady who has been surrounded by controversy somewhat? You worked with her on at least two occasions that I know of. That is Betty Davis. Well, I'll tell you, uh, many times I've been asked many, many times uh, who my favorite leading lady was. And um, I must say, uh, Betsy Blair was wonderful in Marty, and uh, she did a magnificent job. But my favorite, favorite leading lady was Betty Davis. I have never in my life worked with such a wonderful lady. She was the epitome of... of, of uh, everything that one could possibly want in an actress and that means she was lovely inside as well as outside she was uh, great in her work she was helpful and when I showed up at, uh, as early as I possibly could in order to go over my lines and stuff and walk through the set and everything else who would I find there first Miss Betty Davis and she uh, was, in my estimation, one of the finest, one of the greatest ladies of the, of the cinema that I've ever seen. Ernest, we look forward to having you back in Australia. We always enjoy the times you come here. You're always welcome here. You're almost kind of a, an honorary Aussie. <laughs> well, I hope so. I, I, believe me, coming to Australia to me is like coming home again. It's a, it's a wonderful place, and you people are so warm and friendly, and and I look forward to my visit, as, a, as always, really. That'll be great. Ernest, we look forward to seeing you back here, and we thank you for talking to us tonight. Our guest has been Ernest Borgnine. Thanks, Ernest. Thank you, Peter. God bless.